protective equipment is commonly used in combat sports to prevent injury to various parts of our body. There are certain pieces of kit where there is no argument against their use like groin guards and gum shields. However, one piece of protective equipment that has attracted some controversy is head guards. Injury to the head, neck and face are incredibly common in combat sports, with concussions being the injury most athletes want to avoid. Concussions are characterised by an impact to the head that results in short-lasting neurological symptoms such as loss of consciousness, dizziness or visual impairment. It is now well established that repeated concussive impacts can lead to the development of chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE, where people can show severe brain degeneration at a young age. Concussion prevention is the main motivation for many people choosing to wear head guards, but are they actually effective at reducing concussions? The main idea of head guards is to reduce the impact of strikes to the head by absorbing the force through the extra padding. A study by Andrew McIntosh and Declan Patton in 2015 compared seven head guards that are worn during combat sports competition and training. They tested the head guards by attaching them to a model head and applying a force equivalent to that of an Olympic boxer's punch. They measured the change in acceleration of the model head to see how well each head guard absorbed the impact. What they found was that there were significant differences in the results of all of the head guards. The head guard that performed the worst was the lightest and thinnest, and the one that performed the best was the heaviest and thickest, which makes sense but also shows that some head guards on the market are going to be better at absorbing impact than others. One limitation of this study that the authors pointed out was that they only looked at linear acceleration of the head which is the same acceleration in receiving a straight punch like a jab. They didn't look at rotational acceleration, which is the equivalent to a hook or a round kick, and is also the most likely type of acceleration to cause a concussion. A study published a year later by David O'Sullivan and Gabriel Fife addressed this limitation by looking at both the linear and rotational acceleration of different boxing and taekwondo head guards following impact. They compared their results to a previous study that had shown that a rotational acceleration with a value of above 7,483 radian per second was associated with a 90% risk of concussion. The results of O'Sullivan and Fife's study showed that the rotational acceleration of all of the head guards following impact was greater than this value. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that a head guard user would sustain a concussion following the same impact but it does demonstrate that the head guards don't reduce rotational acceleration enough to guarantee prevention of a concussion. These two studies looked at the head guards ability to absorb impact, but now we need to see if there's any evidence of head guards actually reducing the rates of concussion. It's important to state that concussion research is difficult to carry out because many concussions are never reported and there's a lack of concussion testing available at all levels of sport. Taking this into account, a literature review published in 2021 by Anne Tiondal and her team looked at the relationship between head guards and head injuries in Olympic boxing. Head guards for Olympic boxing was first introduced as a safety measure in 1984, but in 2013 they were removed from male competition. There has been little rationale provided as to why they were removed for males but not for females or juniors, but that's a separate issue. The main conclusion from the paper was that the current research is not strong enough to be able to say for certain whether or not head guards are useful in preventing concussion. However, the paper did provide strong arguments both for and against the use of head guards in Olympic boxing competition. The main arguments for using head guards is that they will absorb some of the impact of strikes to the head, and they have also been shown to reduce superficial injuries to the head such as cuts, hematomas and facial fractures. The main argument against head guards is that athletes are more likely to take risks when wearing them. Due to a lack of research and poor athlete education, many fighters believe they won't sustain a concussion when wearing a head guard, so will be more comfortable throwing and receiving harder strikes. Tiondal's paper noted the results of an earlier study that looked at the behavioural changes of boxers before and after the head guard ban. The study found that once head guards were removed, boxers threw and landed less punches and that defensive footwork increased by 20%. To summarise these studies, head guards have been shown to effectively reduce the linear acceleration of strikes but haven't demonstrated the same reduction for rotational acceleration which is a more frequent cause of concussion. It has also been shown that head guards appear to offer more psychological than physical protection meaning that any absorption of force might be counteracted by the fighter putting themselves in a more dangerous position. So considering all the things we've discussed here, should you wear a head guard? 
I personally believe that combat sports practitioners should not wear head guards, with the only exception being people recovering from superficial injuries such as cuts or facial fractures. The majority of concussions occur in training rather than in competition, so we clearly need to change our ideas around the training environment. If you go into training wearing a head guard, you are most likely preparing for the inevitability of receiving a strike to the head, which I think is the wrong attitude from the outset. The focus shouldn't be on finding a way to make taking strikes to the head safer, but rather on avoiding these strikes in the first place. Now I'm not suggesting that you eliminate head strikes completely from your training because you can't learn how to defend your head without someone trying to attack it. The main point I'm making is that we need to reduce the overall volume and severity of strikes we are taking to the head each training week. The use of head guards is still a growing area of research where strong arguments can be made for both sides, so let me know what your opinion is down in the comments. I hope you managed to learn something from this. Thanks for watching, I'll see you for the next one.